It was the summer of 2023 when I noticed orange packages like this one showing up on doorsteps in my neighborhood. It wasn't long before I saw one on my own doorstep. I went to the app store and I noticed the same logo was number one suggested. What's going on inside of these oddly shaped orange parcels? Today we find out on the Timu Tackle Fishing Challenge. Today's video is sponsored by Timu, obviously. Yes, my friends, Timu is just blowing up right now. I'll be really honest with you. I did not know what Timu was about a month and a half ago. When then we got a Timu package at the doorstep and I asked my wife, what is this? She was like, oh yeah, we could like have her kids toys from Timu. It's this crazy website with everything on it. So I downloaded the app, I started looking at Tackle and I could not believe the prices. So if you've never heard of Timu, just go ask your wife or girlfriend, they'll probably tell you all about it, just like mine did. Just to give you a brief rundown, they have crazy low prices. They have savings up to 90% off 90 day free returns, free shipping, and if you download the app, if you go to the description, use my code, you can save $100 in coupons. So download the app, use my code, start shopping. Over the summer, I've spent over $100 in hooks alone for jug lines, and I wanted to see what the prices were on the hooks and basic terminal stuff for building all that on Timu. So in today's video, we're gonna be testing out the tackle seeing what we got in here and putting it to use out on the water. All right, let's just take a brief gander in here before we get out on the water. The goal is to have some catfishing gear that I can include with my jugs. I've got to replace these. I had some lighter line, I've had some breakages. They're just getting crusty with catfish goo. So our goal here is to be able to replace a lot of that with some gear that we got in here. Oh my gosh, this thing is absolutely packed. Oh, I remember what this is, guys. So as part of catching bait, you know, I've been using a fly rod and everything. I actually ordered this right here, which is a 3.6 meter telescoping fishing pole, which is like what I used to have when I was a kid. So this baby telescopes out into a long fishing pole that I can catch brim with as a bait option. Let's just go ahead and rip her open and dump the rest of the stuff out like Christmas morning, shall we? Oh my goodness. So a couple other key things for our catfishing experience. We gotta have bait. I am terrible at throwing a cast net, guys. Absolutely terrible. This is a minnow or crawfish trap. I've never used one of these, so this is gonna be really interesting to see if we can get some, some bait in. Uh, we are kind of entering some cool down, so there might be some shad up in the shallows. We're just going to throw some bread in there, see if we get some bluegills, see if we get some shad. This is what I'm really interested in right here. The core tackle for doing our catfishing. Loaded up with hooks with a tackle box for the price. Really can't beat it. Just throw that in the little uh, catfish rig and the John boat. An insane amount of snap swivels. I've spent a lot of money on swivels and snap swivels. It's crazy, like the jug itself, cheap, very cheap. These are ones that I've, I've already had. But when you start doing the terminal, it's really the hooks and the swivels that get expensive. The line really isn't that expensive, but I was having problems breaking off on 30 pound on some of the bigger fish and just getting gar and snapping turtles on the line. So we decided to go with the old shark nylon right here. Now this is 40 pound monofilament line and it's red. So I'm interested to see how that red color uh, maybe dissipates in the water, gives some camouflage, maybe we get more bites on it. And I have been using pliers to get most of my catfish off, but I just wanted to just wanted to get a de-hooker because I didn't have one. Just an extra tool to have that is nice for jugging. Now some other things that I've never used on catfish lines that I'm interested in is, is trying floats. Like for fishing bank rigs and even some jug rigs, possibly using some floats. So I got some, some high-vis little foam floats that you can, can put on your bottom rigs or on jugs to, to help your bait float up. So we got some of those. The rest of this stuff, I was having trouble reaching the dollar limit, so I just started loading up on other types of tackle. I got a crazy amount of rod, gloves, socks, whatever you want to call them. All I had in the Crispy Collector for docking up was like a 40-foot 
standard dock rope. So I got a bungee style dock rope that I use when I'm fishing in my bass boat, throw in there. Now I have been getting into fly fishing and it is quite expensive. I literally spent a hundred bucks on just a ketchup dispenser cup size deal of flies the other day. And I got, look at this cool little fly making kit. So I can make some flies with these hooks right here. I got all sorts of fly tying material. I'm gonna make some mop flies for fishing trout this winter. I got multiple fly kits too. Some of these even included these nice fly boxes. I got a bunch of these copper johns. This is a fly that I was using a lot in Colorado. And finally, just as a random item that I threw in there that was so cheap, I couldn't even believe it. Just to throw these in the camper. I got some motion activated LED lights. I mean, the price on these is just, just crazy. Just to throw inside of cabinets, inside of the camper, just real cheap and easy. These are rechargeable. So we got a mega haul on Timu for cheap and I've never used one of these to catch bait. So let's go see if we can get some fish in our fish trap. We got our fish trap right here, all put together. That's a nice little deal. Comes with this little rope lanyard. So we'll use that. I'm gonna just go to my, my little local hole, throw this off the bank and see what happens. And for some bait, this is our chicken bucket basket thing. This is our leftovers usually from the kids because I eat all mine. Got a little uh, Hawaiian bread bun, some peppers, a couple strawberries, and looks like some goldfish. And a carrot. I don't think we're gonna get much off that, but give her a whirl, we'll dump that in there. And we'll go dunk that in the water, see if anything swims into it. Okay, here goes nothing. We lost one little goldfish on the way out there. I'm just gonna tie this off to a little rock or something. We'll go launch the boat and we'll pick this up here in an hour or so. We'll see if anything has decided to grab on. A little bowling with a hitch, we're good to go. All right, guys, the old crispy collector, she is dusty. Last place I had her, it was a dirt road, shallow water grass lake. She got road hard, put away wet. But right now it's time to go check the trap. We're taking the boat to go check the trap. Hopefully we got bait in there. If not, I've got my telescoping pole. I brought some light line and I'm gonna use some of those flies that came in the Timu package. Got the boat beached, and right here, my gosh, y'all, look at the size of this washed up kitty cat. Big old flathead. That's a magnum. All right, let's go see if we got anything on our trap. Notice there's quite a bit of birds around the bank, so there's gotta be shad close to shoreline, which is good for our trap situation. Oh, we have shad. Actually, I think they're small bluegills. Small bluegills. Um, there's one decent sized one in there. We'll take it. All right, the trap has worked, guys. So definitely not the juiciest of bluegills I've ever seen. And I'm, I'm assuming they ate the bread. Zero shad. I mean, that one will work. A couple of these I'm gonna have to just double up on. The nice thing about building these is it's got a main line that is literally bank line, it's tarred bank line. The leaders get all messed up, you know, after three or four trips, if they haven't broken off already or gotten tangled, twisted with catfish goo, kind of have to replace them. So I went ahead and replaced five of them that needed replacing with that shark line, 40 pound mono. And I put these little floats on here so hopefully that's gonna float the bait up and it's not gonna sag down and get tangled in the rest of the line and I put the five out circle hooks that were in the kit on here 
So now we're just gonna take some of these bluegill. I'll probably set out three lines. It's probably all I have bait for right here. These are doubled up, so two hooks for each jug. We'll throw them out and then we'll try to catch a little bit bigger bait. Got one hook there. Some of these don't have floats on them. Mix it up. I just wanted to experiment and see if the floats are better or not. Some of them are full float compatible. That's pretty neat. I mean, just that color alone might be attractive in the, this dirty water. First rule of jug fishing, don't get your lines tangled. We'll say bombs away. That's a double float rig. Measured that one out, so depth should be pretty good. Yep. Sadly, this guy is not getting much love on bait. I have to redo him. Send him away. Perfecto. We got to get some better bait. So I'm going to break out the Suge Ilang 360. So this is a telescoping pole. Wah bam. Look at that baby. We'll go ahead and rig our line on here. I'm going to tie a uni knot on the end of this. Then I'm going to slip it over the line with a stop knot. I'm not sure if that's how you're supposed to do it, but that's how I'm doing it four pound line it's like little baby hair that little uni knot should slip over that and stop in theory yep i think that's gonna work now we're gonna take one of our trout flies that came in here little rainbow pattern we'll tie that on and i actually just remembered i have secondary bait that we can use we can throw on right now so for this one we've got some pre-packaged bait i'm gonna cut off a couple of strips of this throw it on our hooks bombs away Sneak in here and get a couple. Oh my gosh, there's a giant carp right here. Giant carp. It might yeah, it might eat this thing. It's eating right here. Oh my god, I got him. Oh my god, I had him. Oh my god. He ate it. Oh my god, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Oh my god, I got him. Oh my god, that's a giant. Oh my god, he's gonna break the line. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> yeah, he broke that line pretty quick. All right, back in the game with a fresh fly. Oh god, there's one. Oh my gosh, that's not a bluegill what the heck is that oh my gosh that's a drum <sighs> is that a game species i don't even know i'm not sure if i can use that for bait this drum is up here eating tiny little shad they must have already spawned in their first little spawn going on i'm not gonna use you for bait buddy thank you for the fight though that was pretty awesome if you guys can just imagine what that carp that carp was like eight times that size if i can get one bluegill it's sometimes enough for two jugs all right we got them boys that's the size we're looking for right there he smoked it Throw them in our basket. I'd say this little pole came in handy. The Suge Ilang 360. 
busting out the big bloogies. All right, let's power her up. Head back out there. That little exploration took about 30 minutes, so I'm hoping that by now one of the jugs has gone off, that we're gonna put our big buddy on here and try to get something else, or at least replace the bait, the two tiny baits. The sun is starting to go down. We maybe got like 30 minutes, but I've caught cat, you know, a lot of catfish within an hour. You know, once once they move in, start eating, it's game over. I'm gonna go ahead and rebate these, and then we'll check the other ones. Oh, hang on a second. We got something on here. We got something, boys. Oh my gosh, a double! A twofer? What? They love the floats. And I think these were the little gills. Oh, baby. Let's go. Circle hooks, hooked them up, kept them pinned. Yes, sir. Whoo. There we go. Timu Jug's getting her done. But man, I'm, impre I'm impressed with the floats. It's something that I've sort of seen online people do for catfish. And I wanted to try it for jugs. Just for the sheer fact that some of the times my lines get tangled doing this. When they get really tangled, you have to replace them. But that just worked out perfectly. Go check this other jug. It may have something on it. Two eater cats. Two good eater cats right there. Look at that. Sundown eater cats. Gotta love it. That's a really good one. Oh, I think this one's moving too, guys. I think this one's moving too. This had the tiny bluegill on it. Shoot, I'm gonna miss him. Gonna back up. I think it's bobbing though. Oh. Nope. There's nothing on that one. Looked like it was bobbing for a second. Did get one of the bluegills cleaned. So we'll go ahead and rebate this one. Bombs away. This next one I think was one of the first ones I put out with a decent sized bluegill, so. Man, nobody home on this guy. Those were the better sized gills too. Bait is completely cleaned. They wanted it. Get that rebated real quick. This catfish deal, it often happens just quick. You know, I've not, I, I don't see a reason to leave jugs overnight or something like that, because every time I've been, it just pops off. Pops off fast, you gotta be ready. All right, that is a... Uh, that is a big meal right there for some hungry kitty. Get the last 15 minutes of daylight. See if anything whacks it. Sun's getting low. I'm gonna give it 10 minutes and we'll see if we get anything on these lines. I'm surprised, well, we got our baits taken on some other ones, but I'm, I'm surprised that nothing touched that artificial bait. I recently went on a trip where they, they were actually preferring it but every day is different. They like the bluegills. And the one, the double I had on the two tiny bluegills, and I'm pretty sure it was not the double up. Pretty sure it was just the singles that I put on there, which looked silly with those big hooks. But hey, we'll take it. We got some dinner. And also, we've got fresh bait out on the line. So fresh cut bluegill, doesn't get any better than that. Hopefully we get something on the line in 10 minutes. Well, fishing freaks, moon is coming out. It is time to go check these last three lines. Let's fire up the Merc, go check them.
Give me some. Ah, I felt the bottom at first. Sometimes it digs in the mud. It feels like a fish, but that's not a fish. The last one is our big old juicy head. Let's go see if we got old Big Mama on there. That is nothing but a beautiful sunset. That's all that is. I don't feel anything. Well, we were successful on one of our jugs. Teamer jugs came through. In a two hour session, that's not bad. We got dinner in the cooler and we had a successful evening of fishing on the Timu gear. You know, I actually caught four species and the craziest part to me was hooking into that big carp because every time I've seen one like that and I've tried to catch them, you throw any kind of lure in there and they just, any kind of splash and they're gone. I was able to just put it right in front of that fish and if I would have had a reel on here, it would have been an insane fight, but I had like four and a half pound test uh, tip it on there, broke it almost instantly, but I was able to get the bite. So it gave me uh, an idea to try to go do that with a fly rod. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And I was able to get bait in the fish trap and that's what we ended up catching the catfish on. I'd never used a fish trap like this before. Got no shad, but we got bluegill and that worked really well too. So that's another thing I'll keep in my arsenal for catching bait. And I want to figure out how to catch shad. That's, that's really what I'm missing on these catfish jugs is using shad, especially right now with fall and everything's going after shad. Something else new that I tried that I liked that I'm probably going to continue using. I think it helped keep the bait up, especially using a bigger hook like that. Keeps it from dragging dragging down and it might even be an attractant. So I like these, uh, these colors for these dirtier water jugging. I think that was a, a good addition. I'll probably keep adding these to my jugs in the future. And the most impressive thing to me in the Timu gear that I got was the hooks. That to me was probably the best value because we all know how expensive hooks are and I got a ton of them in here. There's 150 hooks in this box. So don't forget to download the Timu app and use my code right here to get yourself $100 in coupons to start saving. So thank you guys for hanging on a bumpy ride with me today in the Crispy Collector. Make sure to stay tuned for more outdoor action right here. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you back in the great outdoors on the next one.